Yes, what have I got for you today? I have got, um, I've got a lady who definitely needs a trip, or maybe even a couple that need uh, a trip to a beauty salon to uh, rival lovely uh, Magdalena. Um, and I've got some gore. And then, oh, I've got some more gore. Sorry. Or maybe not sorry, I don't know. Um, so let's go straight to the first image, which is, oh, no, not that one. I've done that one, which is this one. Um, so this is from an altarpiece. And as you can see, it's um, a lovely lady wearing a fantastically well knitted onesie. Um, I mean, just just look at the, the, the very straight knitting lines. I don't know what knitting lines are called. Just uh, It's all very, very beautifully created and lovely ribbing around the, around the neck and, and around the sleeves. You know, whoever, whoever did this for her is, um, is a, a very proficient knitter, I think. Mum, I think that you could, I think you could rival this definitely if you wanted to knit anybody a onesie out of hair by the looks of things. Um, and this lady wearing a hair onesie is, she's ascending to heaven or she's being uh, sort of hoisted up to heaven by angels. Well, I say by angels, plural, but actually I'm kind of feeling that it's this little one at the bottom who's doing all the work. So the one she's got her knees on his shoulders and he's like, oh, he's, he's really pushing her up to, to, to heaven where she can be crowned by God. Um, and the rest of the angels, it would seem to me that they're just sort of, you know, they've just got their hands to the side of her going, look, you know, hi, smile and fly. Um, we're helping, look, we're helping. And they're, and they're not really doing very much at all. Apart from possibly, I might eat my words, because possibly the two at the top, um, they kind of look as though they might be holding her head in place. I don't know what you think, but it looks like her head might have come off and they're frantically just trying to keep it there until she can be crowned and then goodness knows what will happen. Um, so an interesting image. Was this just an, an anomaly? Um, this is um, Northern European, probably German. It's on an altarpiece. Um, um, 14th, what was it? What's the date? Um, yes, 1430. Sorry, I had to check that one. Um, not an anomaly, another one from the 15th century. Um, this is the same person, presumably, only this one tickles me. So she's got, so she's got her hair suit on. This one doesn't look quite so much like a onesie. This actually looks like hair that is covering her body. Aha. Uh -huh. um, but not her breasts, you notice. Um, and, and <laughs> I find this slightly odd, um, the way that she's sort of got her hands as though she's kind of, I don't know, wishing that she was in a Wonder Bra advert before Wonder Bra was ever, ever invented, which is entirely inappropriate because of course this is once again on an altarpiece. Um, you can see just faintly behind her head the um, a little bit of a, a halo that has been um, pounded into gold this is gold leaf behind her and so it would have the, um so the artist would have taken don't know who the artist was by the way or for the other one um taken um some uh, special in, um implements uh, instruments to just sort of pound very gently this halo into the gold leaf so you know this is this is somebody who is either a saint or um or is a, a saintly person um, so who is this lady covered in hair? Anybody guess? Of course, you can't. Uh, if you could guess, then you couldn't tell me because, um, sorry, I've just kicked the stand um, because you can't comment. But this is, in fact, Mary Magdalene. Um, so the story goes that Mary Magdalene, once she had seen Jesus ascend to heaven, so once he had risen again and she'd seen him in the garden and, and then he, um, he went, off to, to, went off to heaven, it's like he packed his bags, he ascended to heaven, um, she then went out into the wilderness and she went out into the wilderness for 
30 years and she was sustained and nourished by angels throughout those those 30 years but of course she couldn't get to a hairdresser and so the writings um, um, said that you know, her hair grew and covered her whole body. Now to my mind that means that her hair, this hair grew and covered her whole body. But no, no, artists in the 14th and the 15th centuries, they took it far more literally. And so there are very, very many depictions of Mary Magdalene with hair literally coming out of her body, like she's just covered in hair all, all over. So that is the reason why. I'm gonna throw a spanner into the works now because I'm gonna show you this one. So this to me, I always think this just looks like a little cocktail party. Um, and this is, uh, this is once again from a 15th century manuscript, once again, um, an anonymous artist. Um, but if we go from right to left, so the, the person on the end is um, a, a saint, not entirely sure who it is, um, but a saint that was martyred, because you can just see that she's holding a martyr's palm, this, uh, this palm that's um, sort of kind of coming up across her body. The one in the red and the blue, is Saint Margaret. Um, you can make out at her feet there's a dragon. So that's a whole other story. What if we should do Saint Margaret actually? Um, Saint Margaret and the dragon. So the dragon is her attribute. And then the two ladies on the, to, um, so in the middle and then on the, the left hand side. So one covered in hair. So you think, oh, okay, so that's Mary Magdalene. Um, but then you go to the one right over to the left hand side and she's holding um, a, a jar of ointment which is Mary Magdalene's attribute. So it's like, oh, are there two Mary Magdalene's? Yeah, it gets, I'm opening a whole can of worms, it does, it gets really complicated. So the one on the left hand side is actually Mary Magdalene. The one all covered in hair in this image is not Mary Magdalene, this is Mary of Egypt. So. The Mary Magdalene that we think of today is the penitent prostitute who also, you know, tended to, to Jesus and so on. She's actually a composite of, sort of herself, which sounds a bit odd, um, Mary of Egypt. And then there's another Mary um, who was the sister of Martha, who um, wasn't hairy, so we don't care about her today. Um, but it's this Mary, Mary of Egypt, um, from whom we get the idea that Mary Magdalene was a penitent prostitute because Mary of Egypt was a penitent prostitute. She lived a life of vice and, um, and eventually went off to a, um, a religious festival in Jerusalem, the exhortation of the Holy Cross. Um, but she went there not to be redeemed, um, but basically because where there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people that are going to be wanting to buy what she was selling. Um, so that was the reason she went there. But in fact, whilst she was there, something happened and she, um, she did repent and she, um, she also went out and lived in the wilderness. Hence, she is also covered with her um, but she went out to the wilderness with three loaves of bread and um, and died <laughs> so I'm laughing she went and died um, but yes she went out uh, she did meet she met um, Saint Zosimus um, yeah I've never heard of him either so this is an image of um, Mary of Egypt meeting Saint Zosimus who gives her a cloak um, before before she dies um, but then he comes back a, a little while later and and she is no longer in the land of the living and so he buries her with the help of a lion so interesting story so if you see a Mary being given a cloak if you see a Mary um, a Mary <laughs> If you see a hairy lady in the wilderness with being given a cloak or with loaves of bread, then that is Mary of Egypt. If you see a lady in the wilderness um, sort of with more spiritual connotations with angels or perhaps, um, I was going to say perhaps a halo. See, this one's got a halo. So they're very often conflated. Um, so it's, it's all a bit confusing as to which hairy Mary you're looking at. And sometimes it doesn't matter because for, um, for, decades, centuries, um, they, they've all sort of been mashed into one, really. So 
there we go. That was a can of worms that perhaps didn't need opening, but I found it quite, quite interesting. So next image. Oh, now we're going through a little bit of gore again, which I know Ricky loves especially. Um, here we go. How about this? I'm just going to give you a couple of moments just to look at it and look at what he's holding. Mm. I have to confess, I think this is this is one of the creepiest images that I that I know in art. Um, when I was studying art, uh, I came across this one and it sort of haunted me. It's not a massively, um, massively famous painting. Uh, it was painted by Spanish artist Ribera. Remember Ribera? We've met Ribera before. I'm just going to remind you. She's becoming a bit of a favourite. So this was Ribera. Um, old lovely Magdalena also needs a trip to the hairdresser. Oh, the barber or something. Um, so this is um, Ribera as well. This is a very early Ribera. This dates to about 1612. And this is St Bartholomew. Uh, so you can see perhaps what he's holding when he's holding a knife in one hand and in the other he has draped over his hand and this is the bit that I find most creepy so he has skin so basically he has an entire body of skin and his face you see that the face down there with the with the beard um, just draped over his hand and it's just the way that you can see the hand um, underneath the skin that really gives me the the, the collie wobbles a little bit I think it's that's quite that is quite creepy to me um, so Saint Bartholomew was uh, martyred um, he was flayed alive hence this image um, like many martyrs he wasn't actually killed by being flayed alive um, in various stories he has his head chopped off and in other stories he is crucified upside down like Saint Peter um, but he's always depicted with a or often depicted with a knife and carrying his skin um, I think this is quite an interesting image because it 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 sort of looks to me like this is more like the thug. I mean, look at the look at this man's face. He 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 looks more like the the thuggish, mean, nasty executioner that you know brandishing his his weapon of choice rather than the saint. Um, uh, the, and the reason that I say that it is the saint is because you can see a very faint halo just behind his his head so this is a depiction of saint bartholomew either that or um ribera was possible i don't know ribera's works are often really really violent and and the excuse given by art historians if an excuse is, is needed the sort of explanation given by art historians is that well you know he's just reflecting the extreme violence of the society in which he lived um so I'm just thinking, well, if he was, he really was mixing with some extremely violent people, then a lot of his work is, is very violent. Um, so I'm just thinking that maybe this was one of the violent people that he mixed with, who then kind of threatened him and said, you know, oi, you, I want to be depicted in one of your images and I want to be depicted as St. Bartholomew's, you know, executioner or St. Bartholomew, you know, make me a saint, make me a saint. Um, silly flight of fancy but I just I, I can't find an explanation as to why this um this man looks really quite thuggish when he's supposed to be a saint um, many depictions um, Ribera was only about 20 when he when he painted this um, so just as another image of Saint Bartholomew this is um, Michelangelo's depiction um, from the the Sistine Chapel um, so the, there he is once again with his sort of skin hanging off him and his, uh, and his knife in his hand. St. Bartholomew, there you go. So now you know another one. Skin, knife, flayed, Bartholomew. So finally, finally, it's not, it's not getting any lighter today, I'm afraid. Um, we've got this one. Um, so this is from a book, um, it dates again to the, the 15th century, a book 
For what? Well, first of all, I thought this image was just in um, an illuminated manuscript. So I thought, oh gosh, <laughs> what on earth is going on here? Um, it was suggested that uh, perhaps this is just how this, this man sees his wife as a constant pain in the head, tap, tap, tap. But I don't think that's a very a nice, it's a little bit um, a sexist. And she doesn't, she, she's, I don't know, she, she doesn't look like a nag. Um, what does a nag look like? Hmm, we'll never know. Um, but in fact, this, oh, and then I thought maybe it's um, trepanning, which was um, when you basically bored a hole in someone's skull to relieve ple uh, pressure or to stop headaches. <laughs> I don't think it worked. Stop headaches. Hmm. Um, but no, so this, the, the clue here is that this is from a book called um, The Mirror of Salvation. It's in Latin, but basically it translates as The Mirror of Salvation. And in books called The Mirror of Salvation, or what they were was they were, um, they took images from the Old Testament and um, basically paired them with images from the New Testament, saying that these images from the Old Testament were sort of foretelling what was going to happen in the New Testament. And so here you actually have, this is a lady called Yale, who took it upon herself to protect her city, Israel, actually from uh, Sisera, who is the knight with the nail through his head. Um, and she did so by getting him drunk um, and sort of pretending that she was going to seduce him. And then, um, and then when he was in a drunken stupor, taking a whacking great big nail and um, whacking it into his head. Nice. But is that ringing any memories? Is that ringing any memories at all? Perhaps it is. Ring any men, um, ring any memories, ringing any bells. Um, here we go, Judith and Holofernes. Very, very similar story. Judith, who is uh, again saving her city by seducing and getting Holofernes drunk, and then she, and then she kills him. So, uh, Yale and Cicera and Judith and Holofernes. Happy days today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and do something a bit lighter. I think uh, on Monday. I think we've earned um, a little bit of light relief, perhaps. Okay, so let's turn commenting back on. Take the pictures off. Hello, Minas London. Um, and yes, there you go. It's because everyone was saying, oh, you know, we love the gore and the, and the weird ones. Um, and, um, you're very welcome, Mark. It's very nice to see you back again. Um, so yeah, um, although I do want to do something on trepanning. There was um, there's a very strange um, image by Hieronymus Bosch, aren't they? All very strange by Bosch. Um, so I might I might well might well do that one. As entertaining as always. Thank you. Horrifying art. I know. I know. Keep it dark and gory. You're just okay. I might do trepanning then on Monday. Um, I think that's how you say it, or tray panning, I don't know. Um, but in the meantime, if you want to join me tomorrow evening at six o'clock, I'm doing a zooming in on Zeus. Um, so that is a Zoom call. It's £10 per person, so not very much. And we'll do an hour and chat through um, four of my favourite paintings from Greek mythology, including, of course, Zeus. And actually, there is an image with Zeus zooming. Um, and then on Monday, we'll do um, yeah, maybe, maybe something gory, since you seem to love it so much. Um, or a bit strange. Um, and then Thursday, more weird arts. And who knows? Who knows in between? Um, oh, of course, there's the, um, the new Pepped Up by Paintings coming out on Saturday. So look out for that one too. That's quite a fun one. So have a great weekend, everybody. Um, look after your heads. And um, yes, enjoy. I was going to say enjoy the sunshine, but it's not going to be quite so warm, is it? Anyway. Thank you for joining me. Bye.